Let's see what happens. Let her rip. Uh oh. What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary. And remember, April showers bring May flowers, but car problems are a year-round shower of disappointment. Speaking of that, I'm here with my 2004 Chevy Malibu Classic, which is shown here with the universal sign of car problems, the hood being up. Unless you're at a car show, when you see a normal car with the hood up, it usually means there's a big problem or work is being done. And in the case of this Chevy Malibu, well, both is happening. If you remember the last video, I completely ruined the motor by trying to do an automatic transmission fluid flush, which kind of caused a bunch of other stuff to let go and well now it's ruined but i'm still trying to figure out if there's some way i can salvage it so stay tuned we're going to come back to this one but while we're on the subject of car problems it got me thinking i have five other cars in addition to this one and each one of them has something wrong with it some more than others but i figured this was a great opportunity to do a fleet update show you what cars i still have and what's wrong with them or what's next for each of them so come along and let's take a tour and get updated on how all of my cars are doing and how each one of them is broken in its own special way. Okay, switching over to handheld mode here because, well, I got a lot of walking around to do. I got cars spread all over this building. As you can see behind me, I'm not trying to hide anything anymore. This car is broken. I got a cart full of parts. I have one of the cams out. This one is loose. Doesn't really need to be out for what I'm gonna do next. And I got a cart full of parts over here because this is just broken. But it's not the only thing that's broken and it's not the only car I have in here. So let's take a look around and see what else is going on and what the status is of those other cars. First up on the list is this car. This is my 1992 Chevrolet Corvette. It is up because I usually store cars underneath it. And it's also up because I rarely drive it because it has been broken for months now. And by broken, I mean it needs a new battery and I haven't done that yet, which is a very embarrassing thing. It's not that I can't do it. It's just that it keeps getting pushed to the back burner, but I have a reason for that. And well, let me show you the car a little bit and uh, I'll explain that as I go. I love the C4, it's my absolute favorite Corvette year, and it just visually is perfect to me. I love this car, I've had it since I was 16, and I, it's, just, it's just awesome. So, why, if I've had it since I was 16, why am I not driving it all the time? Why is it not fixed? Why is something as simple as a battery keeping me from enjoying it? Well, I just don't drive it anymore because it started to have problem after problem after problem that didn't make it undrivable, but made it very inconvenient. And I am now a perpetrator of deferred maintenance on this car. So the heater doesn't work because it needs new heater core, kind of prevented me driving it in the winter. The air conditioning doesn't work because it won't really hold a charge. So I don't really drive it in the hot summer months. Not to mention it also needs pretty much a new clutch and throw out bearing. It makes a lot of noise. And I think the worst offense that this car has is right here that I can show you without the car being down. So up front, I've got these awesome Goodyear Eagle F1s that are really cool tread pattern. They look good and they show when the hood's open. It's awesome. But these bad boys are from 2008. And back here you have, well, the cheapest Continental Extreme Contact all seasons. And that is because I did a huge, huge burnout my senior year in high school and the car the tires needed to be replaced and i went away to college and my dad needed to move it around so he just kind of put some cheap tires just to get it moving on there and every time i get the money to spend on clutch tires battery i almost always end up getting another car or spending it on one of my other cars that only needs a little bit of money so this thing just keeps getting put off and put off and put off and I promise I'm going to change that this spring because, well, it's Corvette season. I've got jorts ready to go. And I just ordered a new pair of white New Balances that are ready to go for this car. So I really am gonna get this thing going this year. I promise. So the Corvette, 100% my fault on why it's out of commission, but I will fix it. Now let's move on to something over here that's not out of commission, but it's still broken. Everybody's favorite, the Car Trek Maserati. And really this is the centerpiece of my collection and for good reason, I mean, look at it, it's awesome. And as you know from the series, it started out with no interior, but now it has a beautiful interior minus the head unit. And I mean, it's even got a headliner, everything just is coming together on this car and it's so, so much better than how I bought it. So what's still wrong with it you might ask? Well, it needs suspension and bushings all the way around, including the shift bushing. And you wouldn't believe, just the shift bushing on this car, $400. The shocks all the way around, 
thousand dollars. And even if I go aftermarket like Coney's, there's still $3,500. Every single thing that I need to do to this car almost exceeds the purchase price. It's crazy and it needs to be done and it will be done, but I am not making that kind of bread on YouTube yet. That being said, it is still drivable, still a lot of fun. And this exhaust note is so, so good. I freaking love it every time. And the good news is that suspension isn't like terrible. It's not good to go on like a long road trip with, but around town, this thing's awesome. And it's car show season soon, so I will be having this car out a lot more. So you might be wondering, why haven't you seen it? Well, it's a little tough to make videos of me just enjoying driving a car that's kind of loose. But car show season, this will be out. We'll be having a lot of fun with it. Let's move on to a car you might have forgotten about completely, but I still enjoy very much. The Free MW. This is my 1997 BMW 528i that I won in a Secret Santa style giveaway from Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage. I also just got my plate there. BMW, that's how Midwestern folks say BMW, so I figured it was appropriate. But anyway, this is a 1997 BMW with 250,000 miles, and it, it looks okay on the outside. It really does. I've got some clear coat fade up there and up top, but this interior, is really remarkable. It's not bad. Everything is in good shape. Everything works now. The most important part, the manual transmission. I had to replace a bunch of that stuff and the window regulator over here, but overall, it's great. So you might be wondering, what's wrong with this? Well, again, kind of like the Maserati over there, this one needs suspension badly. Even just going over the little like cracks in here, you can feel the front wheels shudder back and forth and it will actually make noise. I mean, this thing is as loose as it can be. It's, it's very, very weird, but it also still drives okay. And the only other thing that's going on with it is the air conditioner compressor doesn't work, which hasn't been a problem since I've owned it because the heat works like a champ, but come summer months, I'm gonna definitely want that fixed. Now, as far as the reason I haven't shown it on the channel lately is because I'm kind of at a crossroads with it. Originally, Tyler and everybody else was like, do a Gambler 500 build with it because it's so cheap and you know, it's just, it's ready for it. But the problem is one, I don't have the fabrication tools necessary to do that here. And I would completely tie up my studio area, which, I have already right over there. So it's kind of like a, I'd need a shop to do that in and I can't do it at the ninja shop and it's not really, the Wizards is not really a Sawzall hack stuff up kind of place. So I kind of need to find a place that's willing to do that. But on the other hand, it's a really nice running driving car and the purist in me has just been kind of leaning towards restoring it, but that's not quite as watchable. So I still might need some input from you guys on what you'd like to see with this car going forward. And while I'm on the tour here, this is a great time to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already and like well, wherever it is here because it greatly helps please the mysterious YouTube algorithm. I'm really trying to make this go. I'm really trying to do this for you guys and anything helps. So toss me a like, toss me a subscribe if you haven't already. And, uh, and yeah, we'll move on to the next car. Over here, we have my 2003 BMW Z4. This is the penny slot Z4. I actually showed it in the last video. We took it over to Johnny's to do the rear differential bushings on this thing, which was quite the job. Uh, when Johnny said he didn't like to do it, it, he meant it. This was an all day job for him and wow, what, uh, what a piece of work. But it's fixed now and you might wonder, well, what is still wrong with it? Well, if you don't, if you can't tell, these hideous wheels that I've wanted to replace since day one, well, they're still on it. And that is because, here comes a quick cut, because these beautiful M parallels over here, which I originally test fit on the car, don't exactly fit the way I wanted them to. So they physically fit on the hubs but the rears stick out like an inch and a half, which is okay looks wise, but the second the suspension would go up in the wheel well, it would tear things up. And the fronts, oh boy, there is no clearance and any amount of turning would just rip the fender liner out. So it, it's a big disappointment, but these are the big E38 M parallels and they just won't fit on that car's tiny little frame. So I'm still gonna keep these, I'm still gonna find something to put them on, but unfortunately they aren't going to work for the Z4. I also got my plate for it. This one's pretty self-explanatory, but still funny. But fear not about the wheels. I have wheels on order as we speak. They're on their way along with new struts. So this car is about to be completely redone, regone through and totally drivable just in time for spring and summer, which I guess would also 
probably make the Corvette a good candidate to be ignored again. But now that I've got you guys holding me accountable, I'm not gonna let that happen. So the Z4 kind of broken, still needs a few things, but definitely better than, uh, than some of the others in here. Now, there's one more car outside that I do drive every day that we need to check up on before revisiting the Malibu and trying another fix just to see how screwed I am on that car. Let's go check on my daily driver. Okay, and now we go to my outside cat, the 2008 Toyota Prius. Now, as you guys know, this was kind of the foundation for my channel. This is the car I started making videos with to kind of warm myself up, but then, well, totally fell in love with it. This is my daily driver, rain or shine. This is, like I said, the, the car that I can count on. So it sucks when something's wrong with this. So what is the problem with it then, you might ask? Well, nothing that's preventing it from driving, but it is something that could one day and is kind of annoying when you stop driving it. Under the hood, we have our internal combustion engine and then our hybrid synergy stuff. This stuff is still cooled with coolant and it has a pump. Now it has an inverter pump and it has another pump that kind of pumps warm coolant into a little thermos that holds it for later that supposedly helps with emissions or helps reduce emissions when you start it up. I don't know, it's, it's something weird that Priuses do. But mine has a very, very loud pump for that thermos. So when you cut it off, it just wails at you when you cut it off for the next 30 seconds. But there was a brief time when it was super, super cold this winter that that pump stopped screaming completely, which means it wasn't pumping at all which I'm very worried about. I looked it up and it's underneath this, underneath that, underneath this. It is like an eight hour job to get to this pump that I'm not even sure is entirely necessary. But I've also heard both sides. It's either it's not necessary or it'll give you the red triangle of death and completely cripple the car. So I don't know, but I know it's coming soon and that sucks. It's like driving around a ticking time bomb with this car. That is it for the Prius. Still love this car, still a champ, and even car enthusiasts can enjoy these cars. So. Let's move back inside and see what's going on with the freaking Malibu. Okay, anyway, now that we are all 100% caught up, let's talk about the Malibu and its current status. Last time you saw, I lost compression. The thing was out of timing. It was jumping time. Bad, bad news. Well, update, still bad news. I've taken one of the cams off. This cam is still in there. And the game plan is right now to verify if this engine is even worth saving. So the timing chain job on this car is a massive job and I don't wanna do it if the piston rings are gone. So what I'm gonna do right now is I've taken the cams out so I, for sure every single valve is closed regardless of timing because I'm taking the timing away. Then my uncle and I are gonna do the air test and the game plan is when you apply pressure to it, since all the valves are closed, that piston should go down a little bit. And if it does, our seals are fine. If it doesn't and air just kind of blows right by it, this whole motor might be toast. And that is gonna be a discussion. First things first, let's pull the rest of the stuff that we need to off and get this air test going. This should be fascinating and it could help us determine what to do with the car. We got a hose running from really far away. We're gonna hook this bad boy into this cylinder and well, the pressure is on. Huh? So this is a very homemade thing. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Okay, let's see what happens, let her rip. Uh oh. That's uh, that's air uh, blowing right by. Yikes. I have at least bent valves and maybe no piston rings. That's what I'm getting out of this. But he's going to turn up the pressure just to see. All right, let me go around here. Ah, there's air coming out of back here. Now, if all of the valves are closed, that shouldn't be happening. Not looking good, Malibu. Okay, so that cylinder, obviously massive fail. We're gonna try another cylinder just to see. Okay, what kind of PSI are we talking here? Uh, about 110. Enough to move a piston. Oh yeah, yesterday it moved with 80, I think. Whoa. I think the motor's toast, or at least the head. Definitely the head. All right, well, I know I say this in just about every video I do with the Malibu Classic, but I really do think that's it for this car. Originally, the timing chain was bad, and I was really not enthused about doing that job, but I was willing to do it if it would fix the problem. 
after taking it apart even more and doing this air test, finding out that the head is also bad, well, that is just asking too much for this car. It's, it's not so much the money, but it's the effort. If you think about it, I'll be putting in a timing chain, a new head, might as well call it a whole new motor, and at the end of the day, I will still have just a 2004 Chevy Malibu Classic. Now, if this were a Camaro, a Corvette, anything else, that effort would be good because at the end of the day, I would still have a Corvette or a Camaro. This is a ton of effort and a ton of money to still end up with what is essentially a blue turd. It's very disappointing because I've been rooting for this car. It's been a fun experience, but I think I really do need to start making arrangements for this car. Now, that being said, this is where I need your help. Do I find another cheap, crappy car like this to kind of tinker with, learn on, and give you guys something to root for? Or do I channel the funds that I would have spent on this or something like this and spread it out into each of the cars I just showed you today? Not like I wasn't going to already spend money on them anyway, but it's, it's whether you guys want to see a cheap project like this, or if you'd rather me just stay focused and keep it to the cars you already know and love. Let me know in the comments below. I eagerly await your answers. Now, as far as everything else goes, I think that's going to do it for this video. You guys got a fleet update. You see things that are my fault. The Corvette, that's my fault. That's neglect. The Malibu Classic, shared blame on that one. This car didn't start out doing that well, but then I got it running and then I ruined it. The Maserati, runs excellently, just needs a lot of money because as they say, there's nothing more expensive than a cheap Italian car. The Free MW, excellent shape, just needs one of everything and I need to figure out which direction I'm actually going with it. And the Z4 still needs, well, another major, major trip to the Ninjas. But the Prius, Prius is still pretty good other than that pump. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Instagram. I just surpassed a thousand followers, which is super exciting. I usually try to post a little preview of upcoming episodes on there. Like me on Facebook, join my Facebook group. It's a fun place to share memes and I'm always in there interacting in the comments. Other than that, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe on this video. It greatly helps my YouTube performance. And well, I guess I'll see you guys on the next video. Hold on, there's an airplane. We do live in Kansas after all. This is the problem with filming outside. Another plane.